Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Venomman20 here today. And this guy is an albino common snapping turtle. Very cool turtle. And I have been graciously invited to check out one of the most amazing turtle flexions I've ever seen by this guy. Yeah, I'm Ray from Mid Atlantic Turtle and Tortoise Society. Uh, and the turtles you're going to see are almost 99% of them are all people's pets. Had them for many years, and they've taken very good care of them. Various reasons they didn't give them up. And through mats, we've adopted them out. And a lot of them came to me. Uh, and I'd encourage people that if they're interested in turtles uh, to check out, see if you have a local turtle and tortoise society for your state. You can learn a lot, really good speakers, you can get involved with conservation projects, and uh, you can help place homes, find homes for turtles and homes as well. And we tell everybody, you know, the public, don't collect turtles in a while, we'll leave them out there, do some conservation for them. If you need a pet turtle, check out your local turtle and tortoise society. That sounds great. That's what this was. This was someone's pet from a little baby. Awesome. I hope you guys look forward to it as much as I did. Let's get started. So here we have the Eastern Box Turtle pen, and this guy I'm holding is what they call a blonde phase, just a beautiful, beautiful turtle, and he has a couple of normal males over here, and they even got a wood turtle inside this, this cage. Is this the male or the female? That's a male. It's a male wood turtle, northern, northern, northern. You said this is one of your breeders, right, that produced a lot of the babies? A few, yeah. Okay, very cool. So what's kind of the, uh, the requirements to keep these, even though you kind of shun keeping them in captivity. Yeah, uh, it's important that people know that in the range of the eastern box turtle, they're really in trouble. The habitat destruction, especially the highways, is really taking a toll on them. And in the mid-Atlantic area, we have a, a very dangerous disease called the Ranavirus that's taken out a lot of them as well. So we really don't need people to collect them as pets. The best thing to do is to find them on the highway, take them off, put them in the direction to go on, don't take them as a pet. But sometimes you can get turtles uh, that have been other people's pets to an adoption agency such as the Middle Atlantic Turtle and Tourist Society. That certainly would be the way to get one yeah. because a turtle like that can never be released again. Yeah. Uh, the habitat here has uh, plant material in it. It's very similar to what the turtle could be found in nature. Uh, it's got logs from the climb under, shaded areas under shrubs, uh, shallow ponds. You have to remember these guys are not very good swimmers. They can drown very easily. So you have to provide a variety of things. It'll be quite rough. Gotcha. Very awesome. Now, about how many turtles would you keep inside an enclosure this way? Uh, I would say enclosure like this, probably about six. Six, six turtles at the most. And then you've got to be careful too if you have uh, several males. Males often can be quite aggressive towards each other, uh, which in nature they might not run across each other. But often you've got them in the same enclosure, you've got to be careful. They'll kind of beat each other up. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you have the problem here because uh, you're not in each other's face at all times. There's a lot of room. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of room there, yeah. Okay, that sounds awesome. Let's go ahead and move on. So right here we have a couple red-footed tortoises. There's a couple more behind us, or one more behind us. And this is a yellow foot right here, an awesome tortoise species. But uh, you were talking about uh, trying to save the, the jungle through breeding tortoises. How yeah, is that? Uh, you know, these are probably one of the most popular tortoises because they stay small and they're pretty hardy, pretty easy to care for. They're tropical, they gotta keep them warm. And, um, there have been efforts to try to breed these in captivity to put a lot of them out on the market to make it unnecessary to catch them from the wild and also unnecessary to cut down the rainforest for grazing because these guys need to be grazed in the forest. Okay. So whenever people look for these tortoises to purchase as a pet, they should always look for those that are captive bred. And that means it may cost a little bit more to wild caught, but they're not taking from the wild. 
line. Yeah. That's an important part. Yeah. These Very are great fun. guys. These are they got a lot of personality, and if you're able to give them the proper home, uh, proper feed, and uh, all that they need, they can live a very, very long time. About in years, like what's the maximum longevity of a? Well, this one in front of you there was given to me by a lady who had it for 30 years. I've had it for 20, so it's 50 years that turtle's been in captivity old. already. Right now, this wow. is an elephant. That's crazy. So, you know, you're pushing maybe 80 to 100 years for some of these in captivity. So, people got to think about it. You know, do your homework, learn all about them, and then think about that they might outlive you. You, know? you yeah. might be gone before they are. <laughs> I think it's very interesting that you brought up the fact that that buying a captive-born animal, captive-born, if it's available, that's the way to go all the time. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. if you if you truly care about the animal and the species itself, why not protect its habitat? And, and for protect. other reasons too. Things called out of the wild usually have a hard time adjusting, oh, and yeah. they're full of parasites. A lot yeah, of they time. don't do well. They end up dying, and people have to think about that. You know that it's not it's not fun to have an animal that's always sick. Oh yeah, and, and an animal die when you could have just bought a exactly. healthy one for just. Pennies on the dollar more. Yeah, exactly right. Okay, well, thank you. So we're actually inside one of the pond turtle habitats. And uh, I, I thought it was pretty interesting that all these used to be pets at one time. Um, this guy I'm actually holding is a yellow belly pond turtle. And uh, interesting fact on these, they have a very thick shell because they live down in Florida. And they can actually uh, coexist, of course, with the alligators. It gives them a little bit of added protection. And you were saying that they actually overwinter inside yeah. this enclosure? Uh, this one I have here, Brandon, is a Florida red belly, but there's no red belly. It's because when they're young, the belly is very, very red. It turns yellow as you get older. Both of these uh, do overwinter here in the mid-Atlantic region. Um, the pool here is about two feet deep, so it doesn't ever freeze solid. And I had to keep the pumps running year-round all the way through the winter. This is a pretty good job keeping the ice from going up. You know what's really neat? To watch these guys, they don't just sit at the bottom, they move around all winter long very, yeah. very slowly. I don't think wow. everybody realizes that, you know, the average person don't think about it. These guys are moving around all winter long under the cold, I kinda cold just, water. I kind of just thought they kind of burrowed down yeah, in the know, muck and just stayed we stationary. Taught, you know, even from the yeah. day we were kids, we always said to go to the bottom and stay there all winter, but not necessarily so. That's very awesome. Beautiful animal. So, what all species do we actually have inside this? Well, um, water turtles are probably the most popular of all the pets. And by far is the red-eared slider, and then next to that is the yellow-bellied and some of these Florida red-bellied turtles. Uh, in the pool here are these species we just mentioned, as well as the false map, the Mississippi map. Uh, we have a southern painted turtle, western painted turtle, eastern painted turtle here as well. All of them do well in a pond situation, but in an aquarium, these turtles are way too big to be kept in an aquarium. And you start mixing varieties up like that, there is some problems with the curve. In the pond, it's okay. Okay, gotcha. Well, sweet. Let's go ahead and check out the next enclosure. So it's feeding time here, and we got some big snapping turtles right underneath this water. Look at this big guy. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These guys are awesome. They're just massive. Big old turtles. These are just the common snapping turtles. There's actually, I do believe, three of them inside this pond. All of them very large and kind of hard to see from your perspective. Maybe we'll go ahead and go underneath the water to view these. So I'm really excited about that. this. This is one of my favorite turtle species. This is the Diamondback Terrapin, probably the most beautiful turtle in the world. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to you because you know way more about them than I do. Well, Diamondback Terrapins are really, truly really unique animals. They're native to like brackish water, not really salt water, but brackish water. And in captivity, they can survive in fresh water if they kept very, very clean. 
Now, the Dimevac terrapin, um, throughout much of its range, has been uh, almost wiped out because of over-harvesting for food, particularly for the overseas market. But a lot of states, particularly in the Mid-Atlantic region, have worked very hard to restrict or actually ban the take of terrapins from the wild, and all terrapin meat has to be raised on farms now. But it also means that as pets, you cannot possess them in a lot of states without a permit. Okay. okay. So if you have a terrapin uh, that you adopt from an organization, such as in this case, Mid-Atlantic Turtle and Tortoise Society, and there's organizations like that in almost every state, that, that documentation can be very important for you to have to get your permit. Terrapins are uh, probably one of the smartest turtles. I think they fall in the same category as wood turtles. But one of the things people never think about, you know, we love, in a lot of our areas, we love to eat crabs, right? And um, <coughs> commercial crabbers have traps such as this. Homeowners have smaller crab traps. We're talking about states that are along the coast, obviously, right? Yeah. And terrapins are found all the way down from all along the Atlantic up to Florida, up into Texas. So if you do crabbing, it's very important that you use something called a turtle excluder device. Because what happens is that the turtles go in there to go after the bait you're using for the crabs, and they get in, they drown because this is well below water level. And uh, a lot of the private people, homeowners, will often put crab pots out over the weekend. They'll check them into the following week if I allow dead turtles in there. You get one of these devices, which is required in many states to use. This is small enough that an egg-laying terrapin, such as this, is like that, can't get in there, okay? And this gets wired onto the trap, like so, and the terrapins can't get in there, but don't worry, the crabs can still get in there. Good-sized crabs can still get in there. So this is one way we can help save a lot of terrapins from accidental grounding in these traps and stuff. And the other thing is, too, when you drive along coastal areas, these terrapins do cross the road in the month of June and also sometimes early July for egg laying. So we encourage people to be on the lookout for them. And uh, if you see one, pick one up, pick it off the road, put it in the direction that she's going. We'll take her home as a pet, leave her be, and you save that turtle and also save the potential all the little babies that were going to come out of these eggs. You were uh, also mentioning the disease earlier that, that is in this area, or the fungus that's in this area, and how it's very important not to move a turtle from one area to what you would consider to be a better area. Yeah, the disease we're talking about is called a ranavirus. It actually, it's not a fungus, but a virus. And the mid-Atlantic region of the United States is the hot spot of the whole country. <clears throat> it's a disease that's carried by frogs, particularly the wood frogs. And it's very, very destructive to turtles particularly box turtles, any turtle actually. If you pick up a turtle that may be an infected area and you take it home with you and release it and you don't have ranavirus there, that turtle has ranavirus and hasn't died yet, you could be spreading it. It's, it's against the law to do that for that reason. They don't want this disease spread. So don't pick up animals and move them around at all. Just leave them right where they're at. And uh, just enjoy them when you see them. Got your phone nowadays. Phone's a great camera. Take pictures, you know, take and pictures, just let them be. Yeah. yeah, take pictures, put them on the same side or the opposite side of the road that they're crossing. The direction they're going and just and let them live a happy life in the wild. You've done something very good for them. Yeah, very awesome. These are these are cool guys. Sure are.